Hi, this is Brandon from Watches on You, and today I wanted to film an updated review of the watch that I created last year, the Hoagland & Sons Mark I Chronograph. The reason for this video is simply that my older review um, isn't as updated. I have made a minor design change to the watch, and I just wanted to make everyone aware of it. Additionally, I wanted to film a little bit more of a high-quality review of the piece itself to go through its various features and details. So without further ado, let's get started. So here you can see the box that the Hogan & Sons Mark I Chronograph comes in. Um, and I will open it up. And here is the watch. So I was super excited to create this watch. What I wanted to do is uh, incorporate a lot of features from vintage racing chronographs into a modern design. Additionally, I wanted to give the user a sense of a mechanical feel when using the chronograph while still offering the watch at a very affordable price. And we'll get into that when I get to the movement section, but that was just kind of my overall goal with this watch. And obviously on this channel, we've reviewed hundreds of watches, and I really wanted to incorporate some of my favorite features into a watch that someone maybe my age would be able to enjoy. Because a big problem with people my age, so in the college age, is that they can't really afford that expensive of a mechanical watch. So I really wanted to incorporate a lot of those excellent features into something that they maybe could afford. So um, the price that I'm currently offering this watch for is $149. And the reason for that is simply, I believe it's the best value watch um, with these features by far, uh, especially at that price point. I'll be dropping a link in the description if you wanna inquire about purchasing this piece. Um, I, I, right now I'm selling on eBay. Uh, they have a great advertising platform and I'm really trying to grow the brand. So that's, that's essentially why I'm using that site, but, um, let's move into the piece itself. So the Hogan and Sons Mark one chronograph, it has a 316L stainless steel case, sapphire glass crystal, and it's a, it has 40 millimeter diameter. And I wanted to stick to a diameter that is um, small enough to be worn kind of under a shirt cuff, but also large enough to be uh, visible. And I, I think 40 millimeters, if you, have, if you guys have watched the channel, that's my favorite size for a watch. Um, so uh, an additional feature that I wanna highlight on the dial of this watch that was not on a previous iteration of this watch. So when this came, first came out, it was still called the Mark I Chronograph and everything. Um, but I made a slight design change because the hands on the sub dials used to be black and some people said that that was a little bit difficult to see. So I changed them to a um, steel color. So they're polished steel. Um, and that is obviously a lot more legible. Um, so that's why I made that design choice and we can kind of go through the features of the watch right now, just staring at this dial. So as you can see on the left, we have a, um, chronograph minutes counter. And then on the right sub dial, we have a 24 hour counter. Now that's a basically a day night indicator. It's not tied to the chronograph. So that's something that you should, um, uh, just be aware of. And then the chronograph seconds hand we can see just nicely placed at the top here and we have a nice tachymeter. I really wanted, again, it's a vintage racing based watch so I thought it was important to include a tachymeter. Um, and I will start the chronograph now. And right off the bat, you can obviously see there's something unique. So even though this watch has a quartz oscillator, it has a mechanical module on top of it that makes it have a smooth seconds hand. And addition, in addition to the smooth second hand, it also whips right back into um, to uh, the 12 o'clock mark when you reset the chronograph. And I can do that again just to demonstrate it. Um, and it's I, I, that was pretty much the main reason I used this movement. Um, one of, when I was first getting into watches, I really loved how mechanical chronographs, that second hand just whips right back to the top. I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. And I thought it was really cool when I found a quartz movement that also offered that same feature. So I'll reset it again. And as you can see, it just whips right back to the top. Now, this is not the end of the cool features of this watch. Another feature that I incorporated, and I'll kind of take it off. Uh, we have a nice genuine leather strap that I offer with this piece. Another feature on the watch is on the case back where you can see we have unit conversion and time zone scales. So you can convert between the different time zones that you're in. Uh, I travel a lot, so I think that um, 
And, and that was kind of a big impetus p behind making this design change. I thought that was really cool. Additionally, I have done training in biomedical engineering, so I thought it was cool to have, it would be cool to have a lot of conversion scales. So as you can see, we have kilograms to pounds, um, meters to feet, uh, we have kilometers per hour, liters to, to gallons, kilopascals to PSI, and then uh, this is the water resistance, it's not part of the unit conversion. Um, but before I forget to mention, the actual movement used in this piece is a Seiko VK64. So you get that legendary Seiko reliability. Um, this movement has been tried and true. It's, it's, uh, it's very, very reliable. And again, I was just really excited that I was able to actually incorporate that into a watch when I was, when I found out about the movement. I thought it was just essential that I do that. So, um, one additional feature I want to mention is on the strap. So you have these nice, easily changeable straps. Um, so if you guys have a NATO strap, I've seen people online put some other racing straps on it and it looks really good on that. Kind of those, the black ones with the holes. I think in the future I might incorporate a strap, uh, some new like strap options to this watch. Um, but right now I've been focused on adding kind of new models to the Hoagland and Sons collection. Um, so that is something that, uh, you guys should know. The watch has a signed buckle. Also, it says Hoagland and Sons on the, um, on the clasp there. And, uh, the whole, the whole, uh, reason for the umlaut on the Hoagland, by the way, I just, cause it's obviously, uh, in English, we, when we write Hoagland, my last name, um, it doesn't have an umlaut is, uh, my family comes from Sweden, so, I put the original spelling. Uh, it's actually kind of funny because in like elementary school, I used to do that because whenever we would have an, I would get a new teacher, they would always pronounce it Hogland. And I don't really like that. Uh, it, it has nothing to do with pigs. Um, so Hogland is what I stuck with. Um, and it actually, it, in Swedish, it translates to Highgrove. So, um, I guess the English equivalent of my last name is Highgrove. Um, and I thought that that was, that was essential to include in a brand. And I just love how the logo looks on the dial. Um, so I think that that was definitely, um, that's, that's kind of why I chose that name for my brand. Um, also if you create something, you kind of want to name it after yourself. So, uh, I thought that was really cool. Um, so overall, uh, again, check out the link in the description if, if you want to inquire about purchasing this piece. I'm really excited to be able to share this with you. I'll leave this review off with a nice wrist shot as we can see um and as you can see i have about a 6.5 inch um circumference wrist and it fits very nicely with that 40 millimeter case size and this ca this case i will say is quite ubiquitous again um people have put a variety of different straps on it and it always looks really really nice so you can really customize it easily. And again, you don't need a special tool to take off the strap. Um, uh, if Obviously, if the strap you add has uh, spring bars that don't have that kind of easy locking system, um, you, you'll need a spring bar tool. But again, I just wanted to add that because if I do choose to add straps to my collection, then um, it'll make it easy to interchange between them because any straps I add will have that as well. Um, so if you like this video, remember to like, subscribe and share. And also again, check out the link in the description. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to share this with you guys and discuss it a little bit more deeply. Additionally, um, any design, uh, recommendations that you have in the comments, I'm definitely open to. Again, we're adding new models to the collection. Um, and again, when I add a new model, it's not going to be, we're not going to be improving this one. Obviously, I made that very marginal improvement with the hands, but that's pretty much it. I think that the design is pretty much perfected of this piece right now. Um, but again, we're adding new models, so this model isn't going to be replaced anytime soon. Um, it'll just, we're just going to be adding new models to the collection. So again, thanks for watching the video. See ya.